joining us in studio today to talk about this and other future fields of technology is a professor of interaction design from the University of Applied Sciences in Potsdam. Boris Muller, thank you so much for joining us at tomorrow today. Hi. Now, you and your students actually use printers like this, these 3D printers. Can you tell us what you do with them? Mm -hmm. Well, 3D printers play a very important role in our design process. Uh, we don't design things on screen, obviously, but uh, the 3D printer enables us to print out this virtual object and turn it into a real object that we can take in our, into our hands and really evaluate as a true object. Now you've brought something with you today. Can you tell us about it? Mm -hmm. Well, it's just something very simple. Um, it's basically just a napkin ring, um, but it exists only once, and it just consists out of small letters. Um, and it was printed once and contains a small line of a poem. What I find really interesting about this is not the fact that it's a serviette ring, but that it looks like for perhaps maybe a piece of jewellery I might have lost. Mm -hmm. If I brought in, for example, a picture or something like that, could I get it reproduced? Well, you still would have to recreate the object on screen as a virtual object, but um, maybe there's a new job in there that people will really in, in the future recreate objects on screen and then you can print them out so you can have them again. Now, that also leads me to my next question, patent protection. Mm -hmm. If you're going to uh, recreate something, how accurate is it, first of all? Is it going to be so accurate that we should worry about patent protection? Well, the accuracy of a 3D printer is extremely high, uh, but it all depends on the virtual model that you need first, obviously. Um, and there are already some examples of copyright infringement, um, but I think in the long run um, it's not going to be such a big issue because it's still much, much more expensive to print things out um, instead of just kind of go down to a local department store and buy something like a spoon or a cup. So it's probably not going to end up uh, like as commonplace as a printer already in the house. You won't see it as widely available as that, for example? I think 3D printing will always be, in that respect, always be a bit of a niche. I think 3D printing will play a bigger role when it really comes to, to repairability of, of, of products. For example, if you have a virtual rack of spare parts on the internet and you can download little latches or little, uh, little pieces that you need for your dishwasher in order to repair it, that will be really, really interesting and that actually might change the, the way how the industry develops a new product. Speaking of repairing things and using uh, uh, small particles and reproducing them. Uh, we saw in that report that the Defence Forces in the US are using them to reproduce parts of their arsenal. That is really worrying, don't you think? Well, um, I think this is a bit of kind of a publicity stunt, to be honest, because um, uh, first of all, you can't print ammunition and it's really, really difficult to print a full 3D gun. And history shows it is really simple to build your own gun with, with existing material um, and uh, history shows that nobody ever does that. So I'm really sceptical about that. Now, you're a professor of interaction design. What exactly does that mean? <laughs> interaction design really deals with digital media, but not with the media itself, but really with the relationship that human beings have with, with digital media. So it's not that we're only designing the artifact or the screen, but really how we use it in our everyday life. Uh, 3D printers are a part of your everyday work. Mm -hmm. uh, what next? What can we expect in the future? Um, I think there is a, I think one big step will really be when we manage to integrate um, a 3D model with uh, also um, electrical um, sensors and stuff. So we can really build things, models that do things and not just be kind of uh, plain, plain models. Boris Muller, thank you so much for joining us here at Tomorrow Today. Very interesting.